Hello, welcome to the European Open Briefing for Tuesday, November the 22nd. I'm Rafi Bayajian, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be looking at the latest developments in the currency markets today. So the main news this morning is that the dollar appears to have paused its uh, two-week rally. Um, Although the USD JPY uh, is still holding near its highs around the 111 level, uh, despite the pause in the dollar, uh, US equities are still um, continuing to set fresh record highs. Um, yesterday we saw all three major indices in the US close at an all-time high, and this comes despite the fact that uh, Donald Trump yesterday uh, signaled that the US uh, will withdraw from the Trans-Pacific uh, Trade Agreement, which is currently being negotiated. Um, well, although that, does, that doesn't seem to have been too much of a reaction in the markets to that. Uh, oil uh, has extended its rally into a third day. Uh, it's looking increasingly likely that OPEC and Russia will uh, reach some sort of agreement to curb output at the end before the end of the month. Uh, and the other notable mover uh, has been sterling. Yesterday it jumped over 1% uh, after British, the British, British Prime Minister um, uh, signaled that uh, she will try and support businesses through the Brexit uh, process. Uh, so let's start with what's happening uh, with U.S. stocks. We can see there all three indices in the U.S., the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, and the uh, uh, Technology Nasdaq Composite. Uh, all of them set closed at fresh record highs on Monday. Um, the Dow Jones is up uh, over 6% over the past year, and the S&P over 5%. Um, and and this rally, of course, started from expectations that uh, the new pre U.S. president-elect uh, will most likely cut cooperation tax as well as increase uh, spending on infrastructure projects. Uh, that would boost uh, infrastructure spending would boost um, uh, construction firms. Uh, we also, of course, the the rebound in commodity prices, particularly oil, is helping the energy stocks um, rally as well in the U.S. But also, we're seeing a rebound in medical stocks because. Uh, they had been hurt uh, on the prospects that Hillary Clinton would win the elections, who had uh, promised to introduce tougher regulations, particularly on uh, tougher pricing by pharmaceutical companies. Uh, and the fact that Donald Trump has uh, won instead, uh, the energy uh, medical stocks have uh, have been rebounding. Um, we did have some developments yesterday on the prospect of uh, what will happen to trading relations with the U.S. to the rest of the world. Donald Trump said that uh, he will withdraw the United States from the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal, uh, and that doesn't uh, pose well for um, the future trading relations um, with, with the U.S. and the rest of the world. Uh, but it's too early to um, to speculate on uh, what it would translate to. Uh, it doesn't seem to have been too much reaction in the markets uh, on that. Let's have a look at the dollar yen. Uh, we can see a state that's the uh, five and a half months high uh, above 111. It's currently trading just below the 111 level. Um, we did see earlier today the yen uh, firmed after uh, an earthquake uh, struck off the coast of Japan. Um, although it's strange that the yen would rise uh, due to, to from a crisis, but of course the yen always uh, reacts as a safe haven in times of any crisis. Uh, although the yen has since pulled back a little bit uh, and the dollar has uh, firmed uh, slightly. Uh, the Nikkei 225, the, the major stock index in the in Japan, uh, it only saw a limited uh, sell-off from the earthquake. It does, doesn't seem to have been too much damage from the earthquake, so the Nikkei did manage to close up on the day. Um, and going back to, uh, f to the Fed, uh, we had uh, the Fed Vice Chair Stanley Fisher yesterday speaking. Uh, he said that the strong dollar won't stop the Fed from doing uh, what they should do for the domestic economy. So that pretty much confirms what everyone's expecting, that the Fed will raise rates in December, despite the dollar's uh, sharp rally of the past two weeks. Um, if you look at what's happening with the pound, we see there uh, quite a big jump in sterling from um, 
from around uh, the one just above the 123 level to uh, above the 125 level and the reason of for that jump um, um, is well the the fact that may said that she will try to um, support UK businesses from Brexit that actually came before this rebound uh, the it, it does look appear that uh, this big jump came after U.S. traders, uh, the U.S. markets opened, and that's why there was a sudden reaction to what had already happened, uh, what uh, British Prime Minister Theresa May had already said early in the day. Uh, she hinted at some sort of a transition till deal to smoothen the Brexit process. Uh, so uh, it looks like the UK government will try to negotiate some sort of an agreement where once the UK leaves the EU, there won't be a sudden um, stop to the to existing arrangements. So there will be some sort of transition process there. Uh, and that would be positive for UK businesses. Uh, and in her own words, she said that she won't allow UK firms to fall off a cliff edge from a sudden exit from the EU. Uh, and, and also we have the UK finance minister tomorrow, he will give uh, his autumn budget statement, uh, where he's expected to announce a cut in corporation tax to 17% by 2020. And that would be one of the lowest corporation taxes in the advanced uh, in the major economies uh, so again that would be positive for UK businesses uh, let's look at what's happening to commodities uh, both gold and oil have been rebounding uh, over the past couple of days uh, although oil much more so uh, we of course have the deadline before the end of the month for OPEC and Russia to come to some sort of an agreement and it does look in increasingly likely that this will happen that they will agree at least uh, some uh, uh, level of pr uh, production freeze if not a cut uh, and that's boosting prices yes they uh, could all rallied by four percent uh, to three week high and gold uh, is also slightly firmer um, and that's mainly due to um, the pause in the dollar rally and there there is uh, signs that there's uh, higher physical demand uh, from coming from asia that's also supporting uh, gold uh, of the past day or so uh, let's have a quick look at commodity currencies um, they've been boosted both by higher commodity prices and of course the um, the softer dollar uh, we can see the canadian dollar moving to uh, two-week highs versus the, the US dollar at 1.3390 currently. Uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi, uh, they've rebounded from uh, multi-week lows uh, from a couple of sessions ago. Um, the Aussie is being boosted by higher metal prices such as uh, copper, iron ore and, of, and also coal there's increased demand for those commodities uh, so that's been helping um, the commodity linked currencies uh, over the past day uh, if you look at the calendar it's looking another light light day because uh, we, it is thanksgiving weekend um, this week at the end of this week uh, so we have a quieter market uh, we do have uk uh, budget government deficit data coming out shortly uh, we've got Canadian retail sales and in the US we've got uh, home data uh, from existing home sales uh, and then later we've got the flash consumer confidence index out of the eurozone uh, that's it from me thank you very much for watching and have a great day